Hey there YouTubers, Pat Strikes back here with a nifty little tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about ripping models from Crash the Titans. As far as I know, there's really no information about this on the internet, and I'm one of the, you know, not to sound like a smug little bastard or anything, but I think I'm one of the first people to actually do this and be successful. But, you know, I could be wrong. So, uh, you're gonna need three programs. Uh, you're gonna want Game Extractor, Dragon Unpacker, and Lucas P3D Editor. These are all free programs, and I'll provide a link in the description. You're also gonna want something like Photoshop, or GIMP, or... Uh, Paint.net. You're also gonna want 3ds Max, Maya, True Space, Wings, uh, Blender. Pretty much anything that'll open up uh, a, a .obj wavefront 3D model. So let's get started here. The first thing you're gonna want to do is pop your Crash the Titans disc in, or if you have an ISO, mount that or extract it uh, for the Wii or for the PlayStation. I don't know how to do it for the Xbox if you even can. If you're doing it for the Wii, you're going to need Wii Scrubber and you're going to need to scrub the disk and extract the same file. And what we're looking for is default.rcf. So find that off the root of your disk and uh, once you find it, uh, copy it off somewhere. I have mine saved here already. Uh, there it is. It's about 834 megabytes, so look for that. So when you've extracted default.rcf, uh, launch game extractor like I said I'll provide a link in the description and you want to locate default.rcf wherever you saved it double click on it, it should open up here are all the files in that uh, archive and uh, the ones we want are under package so if you look in here there's packages AI path find combat arena 1 L1 E1 etc etc all that good stuff so the easiest way to do this is sort by file path, scroll down and find anything that starts with package, the first one you see, select that, scroll down to the last one that starts with package, right there, hold shift and click. Now uh, down here your extract directory, you want to make sure that's set to uh, wherever you want to extract all these P3Ds to somewhere that's got enough space. They're not that big, but uh, they do get a bit clunky. So we're just gonna go extract selected. It's gonna go on and takes a few seconds, not too long. And it was successful, it's already done. So we're gonna get out of the game extractor. Now, um, I should go into a sub step. You might, you might not always need to do this, but um, It'll be good to know just in case you run into the situation. Sometimes you won't have the ability to extract the texture for the model. So we have a program, Dragon Unpacker, and what this does is it searches any file for, you know, a file within that that's readable as like an image file or a sound file or anything like that. So you want to click on File, go to Hyper Ripper. And uh, we're going to go search, oops, oops, click the little browse button and browse to where you put default.rcf. And then we're going to go into formats, just check select none. And what we want to look for is DDS and that's a DirectX texture format. So now we're going to go into search, click search, and let it go. It'll find a bunch of stuff. See, we're already over 1,000, 2,000, and these are all textures. We see here, scroll through these. See if we can find anything cool. Um, uh, okay, that's... Um, I don't remember what that's called. That's the snipe. Uh, there's a uh, texture for the spike titan. Uh, the tech pack thing that they all wear. Um, you know, level textures like metal and stuff like that are all in here. As you can see, I took this from a, a Wii game because that's all in there too. This is why there's like 2,000 textures, just because there's repeats of everything. Oh, there we go. There's crash. Um, let's crash again. You get the idea. There's Coco and there's Aku. Aku's texture pisses me off because it's extremely small and it always looks all pixelated when you try to use that. There's the purple thingy. 
Um, yeah, but um, if you don't have the ability to extract the texture from the P3D editor, this is the way you're going to want to do it. But the problem with doing it this way is um, the way the game renders all the textures is actually flipped upside down. So the way that the models are mapped for the textures is upside down. So if you extract this and try to put it on, it'll look all messed up because the texture is upside down. So you're going to need to take this into Photoshop or whatever kind of image editing software you like to use and just uh, flip it vertically so you get it oriented the right way but um, I hope you know how to do that so I don't think I need to talk about it but uh, what you want to do is just extract file without conversion wherever you want it it's gonna be a .dds file so hopefully you have something that can open or convert that uh, I think there's a free Photoshop plugin that'll do that and I'll provide a link to that if I could find it in the description but uh, alright so that's how you get textures if they're not readily available um, so now we're just going to step into the P3D editor here, Lucas P3D editor. This was actually written for another radical game. This was written for Simpsons Hit and Run that uses an older form of the .p3d archive files where they, were, they used to be a lot simpler, but they bumped up their security on them to make it a bit harder. And that's why this doesn't work 100% well. So if you're looking for a surefire solution to this, you know... There's no, there isn't one, so we're going through the best we can. So um, I happen to know that the one of the many crash models that was used for Crash, that, that are at least hidden upon Crash of the Titans, it's located under package L5E3, and you want 9C27FF01. It's 326 kilobytes. Drag that straight in to the P3D editor. And here we have some stuff. There's the texture. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but from the one I showed you in Dragon Unpacker, it is actually upside down. And this is the correct way which the game ends up rendering it. Um, so we're just going to take the texture here, dump it straight on the desktop. Um, now I'm going to show you the wrong way to do this real quick, just, for, just so you know. Um, just a little bit of learning here, so I'm not just like cramming information at you and you're just following along blindly. Um, if you try to export, you know, crash underscore top shape skin, if you go ahead and save that as an OBJ, we can see here on our desktop we got it, we got the MTL and the OBJ. If we pop over into 3ds Max and we go import, and we import that OBJ, uh, you see we have quite a big problem here. <laughs> sorry, I have a cold, if I'm, my, my snuffling is grossing me out, I'm sorry. But uh, you can see here we have quite a bit of a problem. Crash's face is all messed up. His arms are actually supposed to be here. Um, he's got all this distortion going on. And this is because uh, the P3D editor doesn't know how to handle this new... The way they split the models apart for Crash of the Titans. Um, it doesn't understand it. And you get a big error. And this happens. But there is, luckily, a workaround to this that I'll show you now. If you click the, you know, if you look here, everything's like in hierarchy. You have the true, uh, the the pure 3D file that has a texture and, you know, skins and animation stuff and shaders and skeleton. But, you know, I got excited when I saw this skeleton stuff and all the animations, but you really can't do anything with these. They're just, you know, random bits of data that you can't, you can't mess with. Made me kind of sad, but I got over it. But uh, click the little plus next to crash underscore shape, top shape, and you'll see in here we have a primitive group. We have two of them in here. And uh, this is the proper way to extract the model because if you go in and you try to just rip it all at once, you'll get that you know distorted model. So we're going to grab the primitive group, the first one, and click export. Now you can save it as an OBJ, and we're just going to call it crash1.obj. We're going to grab the second one, export this one as crash2.obj. And now we're going to go into crash lower shape, and there's one primitive group in here. And we're going to call this crash3.obj. Alright, so let's pop back over to 3ds Max. Go in import obj. Start with crash1. Now already you can see this isn't distorted at all. And we have his arms and everything. And we're going to go import crash2.obj. Close that. Okay. There's his head. And we're going to go import 
Crash 3.obj. Alright. Now, I can't, I don't think this is the final model because I don't remember him having these shoulder tufts, but uh, I could be wrong. But it it kind of looks more like the beta model, but I don't know. The beta model is in there. I don't remember where it was located exactly, but I can assure you it's in there. And I'll, I'll, sh I'll show that off a little bit later. Um, I recently got a new computer. And uh, all my old dad is on my old one, and I've just been too lazy to move it all recently. So I'm just trying to apply the texture here. Do this with uh, whatever program you're using. If you know how to do that, you know I'm not going to go into that. That's a different thing. But uh, there we go. Got them all textured up. Yeah, this isn't the final model, is it? It looks a little bit weird. But um, let me turn off realistic lighting so it looks a little bit better. There we go. So as you can see, there's Crash ready to go. You know, he can be fully rigged and everything. You can uh, bring him into... If anybody can get Crash or any of the Crash models into the Source Engine and work in Gary's mod, he'd be my best friend for life. Because I attempted to do that, but I just suck, you know. But, um, I got this far. Anyone else who can take it farther, you know, after you have it like this, you know, he's really small on this grid, but I think the units and max are pretty damn big. But you can always just scale them up to fit the grid. Something like that. Move them up. Get them oriented as nice as he can. See, so you checking that out. It works. Um, the problem with these P3Ds, though, is the way that Radical decided to do their security to, oops, the way that Radical decided to do their security to keep these things locked up tight is um, they share bits of information across multiple ones. So like these ones that are like 2K, I don't even know if this 3K works, but as you can see, if we click on the texture, nothing shows up here. That's because the rest of this information is scattered amongst all these P3Ds. You know, they're not named in any logical way. It is a hash dictionary, but uh, I haven't found anything useful with that. If anyone else can figure this out, I got this far. So whatever anybody show, you know, anything you figure out, just post as a video response. Um, I don't rem it's been so long since I messed with this, and I don't have, I used to, I had a big list of where everything I found was located, like all the models and anything, you here's some concept art showed up in here you know you want to look for things you know usually things under like a hundred K you know there's nothing really good in there that doesn't work but uh, things that are around a hundred K uh, oh, here we go just out of a uh, package the package folder from the uh, p3d's uh, it's called a 88 c5 b4 uh, sorry a88C5B54.P3D. Uh, this is um, the little nerdy guy minion. Here's his texture. So we're just going to export that. Uh, and let's go into skin. He's only got one primitive group. So either way you extract it, uh, it should be fine. If you just go straight to the shape you know the skin or if you go to the primitive group it'll be fine if there's one to do it either way so here we have crash we're just gonna save him here and uh, we're gonna reset import nerd is just what I call them that's what I call them because I always forget the names of everything there he is um, let's grab a texture for him Diffuse bitmap. Oh, God, why does it do that? God damn it, Max. 3DS Max 2012 has been pissing me off. If everyone, can, if anyone can tell me what the hell they changed to make it so annoying. But uh, there we go. There he is. No, you can make rag dolls out of these and put them in Gary's mod, or build rigs. And animate them to do like machinima or something would be awesome anybody who can use this for something useful that would be awesome the best way I found 
you know, to find anything in here is just go through these one at a time, see what you find, see what's extractable, see what's not. Um, if you find one that you can get the model but you can't get the texture, do what I said with uh, Dragon Unpacker and uh, flip it upside down and, and, you know, vertically flip the, the texture in like Photoshop or something so it'll map properly. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of the models are not rippable, sadly. There's a lot of problems. You know, it isn't a very user-friendly method either, and there's no surefire way to know exactly what you're going to find. Like, um, let's see here. I already closed 3ds Max, of course, but uh, I think this one for Aku Aku does work if you extract these two primitive groups. So uh, write this down. It's... Uh, F519E793.p3d straight out of the package folder. I think that Aku Aku will extract if you do the two primitive groups, but the texture does not show. So you'd want to rip that with a uh, Dragon Unpacker. Um, yeah, but yeah, just poke around is the only thing I really found that works. Uh, I have a list. I will post it when I recover it for my other computer. So yeah, just, you know, whatever you can find, post it. You know, share what you find. Oh, here we go. Here's the radical. Radical. And these ones work. I'll just export this. And the tech pack. And... Do, 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 do. Skin. And we want to do, do the first primitive group. Be lazy, call it one. Call this one two. Alright, so now we're going to import... Go to our desktop, OBJ, um, OBJ1, material not found, that's fine, OB2.OBJ, okay, okay, you see there, there we go, see, there you go, looks really nice, it looks really cool, these are actually really nice models, radical, you know, some people might say they really screwed up the design, but they did make the models really nice. Even if you don't like the design, you gotta admit they're built well. As you can see, you know, probably triangulated and everything. Alright, so, you know, sorry this tu this uh, little tutorial sucks. I'm not good at explaining things at all. But uh, hopefully, uh, you know, retain something from it. Hopefully you figure it out, you know. Maybe I pointed you in the right direction. But anything you find out, please share it with uh, me and everyone else who's interested. We want to know what you got going on. We're not asking you to give us free ragdolls or anything, but at least show us how to do it. But uh, this is the conclusion. Um, God, I suck at tutorials. But all right. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Crash the Titans models. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, they rendered nice. Uh, yeah, they rendered okay uh, with just default. But um, you want to put on some ambient occlusion or anything? You can do that. Whatever you want to do. Start machinimating, everybody. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. All right. So um, this has been Pant Strikes Back talking about ripping models from Crash the Titans. Hope you learned something. Take it easy.